I'm Skylar Tibbetts. I'm a research scientist in the Department of Architecture at MIT and the director of the Self-Assembly Lab at MIT. And we focus on self-assembly and programmable materials, essentially how to bring computer science to the physical world, to program our physical world to assemble itself and transform on its own. I have a background in architecture. I uh, originally studied architecture and then came to MIT and did uh, design computation and then computer science and was um, working with Neil Gershenfeld and the Center for Bits and Atoms under a DARPA Programmable Matter grant. And so uh, Programmable Matter became an interest and worked on a number of reconfigurable robotics projects and then was hired on as faculty and, and tried to continue that line of work but make it more about materials and about components, that uh, how components come together, rethink construction, rethink manufacturing, or products themselves, how products can be smarter and have, have capabilities to be programmed and change shape, change property on demand. Our programmable materials are uh, everyday materials and what we do is combine them in unique ways with different compositions so that they can act as sensors, logic, or actuators. So every material responds to some type of energy source. Uh, every material has a property of stiffness or flexibility or expansion or contraction. And depending on where we put those materials, different quantities, different shapes, and different mechanisms, we can have customizable smart materials. So these customizable smart materials can change shape, they can change property, they can have decision making, and they allow us essentially to make robotics without sensors, wires, or actuators, but robotics in materials, so material robots. If we look at robotics today, we're used to massive amounts of metal and sensors, electronics, and actuators, and we have this understanding or a visual picture of what a robot is, and what we're interested in doing is streamlining that and embedding all of the capabilities of a robot in a single material. Simple materials that have logic that says if this energy is, is around me or if this environmental condition is around me, do this. Change shape or change property, etc. So you can have actuators, you can have sensors, you can have decision making or logic, uh, but it's only a material itself. And so I think the future of robotics is soft, uh, resilient, adaptive, reconfigurable. It's not hard industrial machine robots that we thought of before. So we introduced a project called 4D printing roughly two years ago and uh, it was a collaboration with Stratasys and Autodesk. A, Stratasys is a 3D printing company, Autodesk is a software company, and our research lab, the self-assembly lab. And we were trying to think about how can we print smart materials? How can we make smart materials totally customizable? Because traditional smart materials are exciting, but they're a niche market. It's a niche product that comes in a super specific package and a size, and it's hard to assemble. It's sometimes cost prohibitive. So what we want to be able to do is make any material programmable. So we started printing multi-materials. Um, those different materials have different properties. They change shape or they change property uh, to go from one state to another. They go from flat sheets into 3D objects. They go from strands or fibers into two-dimensional sheets or 3D objects. Uh, and it really showed that we could customize our smart materials to respond to different energy sources and become different objects in the end. So, the idea of 4D printing was really 3D printing plus time, that we want to print things that change shape and property over time. We want them to reconfigure, to adapt, or, or evolve over time. And that's also like the idea of printing robotics, but no wires, no motors, no electronics. We just want to print things that have the capabilities of robots that could crawl off the bed or could actuate themselves like a robot. The 4D printing work then became a larger body of work questioning how can we program any material? How can we program carbon fiber, wood, textiles, rubbers, plastics? Not just 3D printed materials, but many, many materials. So we call that larger body of work programmable materials, and 4D printing is a subset of those programmable materials.